Thin layer chromatography is a technique used to separate mixtures, along with the analysis of three different pieces of information. One, to determine purity of a sample. Two, identify the components in the sample. And three, monitor the progress of a reaction. When handling the TLC plate, be sure to avoid touching the surface of the plate, as the fingerprints will appear under the UV light. Start off by making a dotted line approximately 1.5 centimeters from the bottom of the plate. This is the origin. Your origin should not be lower than the eluent in the jar, because the sample will likely be dissolved in the eluent. Always use pencil when making the markings on the plate because the ink of a pen has organic dyes, which would complicate the analysis by providing additional compounds that run on the TLC. Today, we will be testing two compounds, A and B. To spot the plates, you will be utilizing micro capillaries, which you will prepare yourself, Start by carefully lighting a match, and then ignite the alcohol-saturated wick of the alcohol burner. Using a double open-ended microcapillary, gently roll the center of the tube over the flame until it softens enough to pull apart. Break off the excess material at the tip in order to obtain a functional microcapillary. The whole point to making these microcapillaries is to make a tube with a very small opening because it is essential to deliver a small volume to the TLC plate. Put out the flame immediately after use if no one is using it after you. When preparing your sample for spotting, you must first dissolve it in an, a solvent in order to dilute the concentration applied to the TLC plate. You must do this for both solids and liquid samples. Using your microcapillary, dip the end into the diluted sample, then quickly and carefully tap onto the designated lane at the dotted line. Do this for both compound A and compound B using one capillary per sample. Your co-spot will have one application of your compound A and compound B. Try to have all three spots equivalent and small in size. You will be using a jar as a TLC chamber where the TLC plate develops. When you acquire a jar, be sure to check the depth of eluent to be approximately 0.5 to 1 cm and add more eluent as necessary. The filter paper in the jar acts as a wick to saturate the jar's atmosphere with solvent vapors. If no jar is available, make your own TLC chamber by using a beaker, watch glass, and filter paper. When placing the plate into the jar, hold it by the edges and be sure to place it upright and leveled without touching the filter paper. Quickly remove the plate from the jar when the solvent reached approximately 1 cm from the top. Be sure to mark a dotted line where the solvent reached before it evaporates. Changing eluent does not typically change the relative positions of the spots, but it may alter the separation. We measure something called the RF value for each spot, which is a ratio of how far the compound has traveled from the center of the spot relative to the solvent front. Large RF values are for compounds which travel closely with the solvent front, while low RF values are for compounds which reside closely to the origin. Once your TLC plate has dried, place it under UV light and circle all markings with a pencil. 
Never look directly into the UV light because it will likely damage your eyes. The TLC plate can be very useful in determining the purity of your product. Ideally, the product and starting material lane should have one distinct circular spot. The co-spot lane will have two spots if the compounds tested have different RF values. Multiple spots in the lane are an indication of contamination because ideally each compound has its own distinct RF value. Any good TLC plate will have a co-spot. It serves as a reference point and a comparison for your product and your starting material. Also, it is an indication as to whether or not your TLC plate was made correctly. If properly made, the co-spot should have one spot for each corresponding sample. Record the appearance of the TLC plate along with the RF values immediately. You should not take the plate home because the silica powder is a health hazard and the aluminum backing is quite sharp and can easily cut you. Now we will discuss how TLC works. The stationary phase is an absorbent layer where substances adhere to. There are two phases to consider on a developing plate, the mobile phase and the stationary phase. The mobile phase is the phase in which the solvent, solvent mixture, is drawn up the plate by capillary action. The eluent is the carrier of the mobile phase. The basis of thin layer chromatography is in the interaction of the stationary phase, mobile phase, and sample. Each one of these three components can be polar, nonpolar, or anywhere in between. A commonly used plate material is silica gel, which is polar. Eluents such as hexane is an example of nonpolar eluent, while alcohol would be considered polar. Eluents can also be combined with different ratios to create varying degree of eluent polarity. For example, ethyl acetate and hexane in a 2 to 1 ratio versus a 1 to 2 ratio. The latter would be less polar due to the greater ratio of non-polar to polar components. As an illustration to explain TLC theory, imagine that the silica surface is represented by the red shapes, and that shapes which fit into the red shape will be held tightly and therefore retarded from traveling up the plate. So a polar sample would have a similar shape, a circle, to the stationary phase shape, half octagon. Now if a non-polar eluent was used, it would not have a similar shape, a triangle, and therefore there's no competition with the sample for the stationary phase. So the sample would be held tightly to the stationary phase. In the case of a polar eluent represented by a hexagon, it can now also fit into the octagon so now there's competition with the sample for the stationary phase. With a nonpolar sample, a square, we don't expect it to bind well. Once again, using a nonpolar eluent, Neither the square nor the triangle will prefer to fit into the stationary phase. In contrast, if a polar eluent was used, there is now strong preference for the eluent to be interacting with the stationary phase, and the sample would not be retarded at all. In this video, you have learned the theory and application behind thin layer chromatography. It is a technique used to visualize the components of a compound, purity, can be used for identity confirmation, and it can also be used to monitor the progress of a reaction. 